I've got nothing bad to say about a college education, really. I have one, I wouldn't trade it for anything. And if you have the, the desire and the money to pay for a four-year degree, I say go for it. But look, we need to stop promoting higher education at the expense of every other form of learning. It's just crazy. It leads to unintended consequences. And right now we got a big one. It's called a skills gap. And the skills gap is bad news for anybody who's addicted to uh, paved roads or electricity or indoor plumbing. Welders, plumbers, electricians, carpenters, steam fitters, pipe fitters, all across the country, there are shortages in these areas, even with unemployment going through the roof. It's crazy. Fifty years ago, those jobs were critical. They still are. The problem is we just don't value them the way we used to. So we don't encourage people to pursue them. We're so focused on getting into the corner office, we forgot how to build a corner office. Construction is probably the best trade you can be in. Um, there's plenty of work out there, especially in Boston and around these areas. I mean, it's booming. We make some pretty good money. There's, there's, there's no doubt there. We, I mean, I'm comparable right now. I'm comparable to a doctor or, or you know, a seasoned attorney. If you like the sky's the limit. You can take it as far as you want. My wife hasn't worked since my daughter's been born. She hasn't worked for 18 years. I've been able to support the whole family. There's a shortage of people in the trades. So you can, you know, as long as you're willing to work and you hustle, you're not lazy. You can, you can work forever. You, you, you'll never get laid off. The best part of it, you're doing something different every day. One day you come in, you'll be doing concrete. Another day you'll be coming in, you'll be doing finish. We replaced the roof. We made the floors and exterior wall, able to withstand the weight. We did the windows, all the trim around the windows, baseboard, all the doors. We've traveled everywhere. It's another cool part of our job. I've been to shipyards, to banks, hotels. I've done uh, hospitals, schools, colleges, million dollar mansions. Being an apprentice is probably the best. You learn on the job. You have hands-on training for the whole five years, so you're pretty much getting the best training in the world. As an apprentice, you got to be a gopher. You're going to be running for material, you're going to be sweeping up, you're going to be picking up tools at the end of the day for all the licensed guys. Uh, you can probably expect that for like a year or two, but after that, you, you know, you go to school, you get your license, then you start the installation process, you start laying work out. The biggest thing is you got to, you know, stay in school because it does take a high level of, of competence, intelligence, and then you got to be a self-starter, self-motivated, and be able to work safely. If you really want to get diverse in your, what you go after for training-wise, the more valuable you are. It's a big camaraderie. Once you get to know the guys, it's a good time. I've developed a lot of friendships over the years with different contractors. I end up seeing a lot of the same guys on the jobs over and over again. That's one of the best things of my job. It's really fun. If you don't mind hard work, it's, it's, a, it's a great job and it's great pay. You know, you can't beat the money. Construction has afforded me the life to be able to support a family. I've traveled from California to Florida and about everywhere in between. I've always had work ever since 1997. I've, I've never been out of work and I can attribute that to construction and it's a competitive field. If you perform and you do good, there's always work. We make a mistake in this country by believing that everyone has to go to college. Not every job in this country, not every way to make a good living is, is predicated on going to college. Succeeding in this country and making a good living is really predicated on preparing young people for their lives and their careers. If I was to tell someone coming out of high school to get in a trade, I would say do it. Just based on the way you can go through the program, get your certificate of the craft you get into, and your wages start out very competitive. I, I feel the best craft workers are the guys that are willing to work hard, that are competitive, that like being outside, and want to do more than just sitting behind a desk. And technical education has uh, gotten a bad rap over the last 15 or 20 years from a lot of adults who for some reason look down their nose on people that work with their hands. A lot of foreign countries, Germany and some of the countries in Europe, actually treat craftsmen with as much respect as they do a PhD. Traditional needs uh, uh, the same work ethic and the same type of skills 
that uh, someone working on Wall Street would need or someone working in the corner office. They need to be dependable, they need to have a strong work ethic, need to do more than their share uh, and the ones that do that will, will move to the top of the, of the ranks. Once they go through the, the crafts, they can work their way through college if they would like to do that with their skills. Uh, so it's not a dead end road if that's what some people might think. She could have gone to college for four years and still not made the money that she is making on this job now. It didn't cost me anything to get any of the training. In fact, uh, me and my wife joke about it all the time because she went to college for four years. And we're still paying off her student loans and she's never came within 20 grand of my annual salary. I mean, I do make better money than I made in other places. And most people start out as a helper and then as you advance, you make even more money. A lot of people think that uh, construction is just a bunch of hard work and uh, no benefits, that, uh, that that's all you can do in life if you can't get a real job. That's not the case. Being able to read a blueprint to put these pieces up together perfectly it takes a lot of talent. Not your everyday guy can just walk up and look at a blueprint and say, oh, okay, yeah, I'll just go ahead and build this power plant. It takes years of practice, experience, and communication between all crafts and people. You know, most of my friends are working class guys like me, and uh, when we go to parties, you know, we got the nicest trucks there. Well, the comparison between college and an apprenticeship program is the apprenticeship program you're learning and you're hands-on. You're out in the field, you have the camaraderie with the people you're around, you're not in a classroom all day. Just a shovel. It's, it's a lot more. I mean, you'll get trained to do whatever you like to do. Knowing what's underneath the ground and then seeing the teamwork between the crafts is an amazing experience. In my spare time, I like to skydive and rock climb. I like to do exciting things, and as an iron worker, daily basis, I'm getting to walk on iron four inches wide, hundreds of feet in the air. You send a lot of kids to four-year college, which is great, and there's skills you can obtain and jobs you can get, but there's a lot of jobs in industry that pay very well, that require a really high level of knowledge and skill and it's just a whole nother path of opportunity. I think it's really important that we offer both in our high schools so that, you know, if I'm a kid that needs to go down this path, I can go this way and I can also be prepared and go, you know, down a skills and trade path if that's what really works for me. I myself would be happy for my own child to be working in an environment that I do. You know, I work with intelligent people, I work with people that work very hard. They work hard for the pay and benefits they get to take care of their family. And I think that's what most of us want is, you know, we want to feel good after we leave work every day. We want to feel like we're needed and valued at work, that I have a skill also that's transferable so I can always stay employed.
Hello, my name is Matt Osborne. I work for Performance Contracting Incorporated. I started at PCI in 2004, the year I graduated from then CMSU. Started out as a project engineer and uh, slowly promoted all the way up through my current position now, which is a manager of pre-construction services. I honestly didn't even know that construction management was an option in college, and I honestly didn't want to go to college. And luckily for me, my dad convinced me that I needed to because he's like, there's a lot of things you can do in construction. You don't have to work with your hands and do manual labor. So I went and met with a guidance counselor and found out about construction management. I did the campus tour, met with the construction department. I liked the curriculum, how it was spelled out, what you were doing, that you touched every facet in construction. They did a good job of basically laying out your whole college career path for you. Oh, I love my job. Construction management as a whole is just managing the overall process of it, from project development, where the owner's deciding what they want to build, um, and then we're there through the duration of construction. It's unique in that we deal with the design team, which is you know, composed of architects and engineers, and then we also deal with the subcontractors. It's kind of an orchestra that we kind of uh, try to conduct to make sure everybody's kind of on the same page. The key responsibilities that we have as construction managers are making sure the project's delivered on time and on budget. In the company, uh, we tend to differentiate into either project engineers or project superintendents. Uh, project engineers basically work on the paperwork side of the business. I'm tracking everything for the owner on paper. So if they didn't have me, then we wouldn't be able to track the proper materials or that the architect has specified are on site. Um, any of the questions that the contractors have, I make sure that the architect's answering them. The superintendent side, they're the ones that are actually out in the field coordinating with the field staff. Contractors come out here and they're getting ready to put it in and, and if they're confused, it's our job to make sure that the, any questions that they have are clarified. The architect communicates to us what he wants, we communicate that to the subcontractor and then any questions in between, we're solving those problems or going back to the design team saying, hey, that can't work. I enjoyed math and science, and I loved building things, just having a hands-on type of approach. And construction management was the thing that kind of tied all those together. Nothing stays the same. It's always moving, very dynamic. I remember when I was little, I, I used to stare at houses and say, how is that built? And just the unique, unique ways that buildings are built. Well, the construction industry, um, as a whole is driven through STEM. You know, science, uh, we're dealing with physics, the way different loads uh, work with gravity. Uh, technology, the industry is really getting technology driven, utilizing 3D modeling software. Engineering wise, we use it on a daily basis. Math, we use measurements all the time, calculating square footage, yardage, volume, area. For life in general, I think any type of STEM curriculum or STEM course is beneficial for your life. We live in sort of an ever-evolving, changing world. Uh, you know, population density and urbanization is going up and up and up. So our old systems and our old ways of doing things doesn't work anymore. Civil engineers are constantly faced with new challenges. How do we house all these people? How do we get water to all these people? How do we still develop and create these massive cities while still having a low impact on the environment? My name is Lisa Tober and I'm a third year PhD student here at UBC in earthquake structural engineering. Right now we're in the structures lab. This is where when we come up with a new theory or a new technology or a new component, we bring it here and test it. What earthquake engineering to me is to engineer structure against earthquake loads. My name is Dorian Tang. I'm studying earthquake engineering. Earthquake engineering for me is different from structural engineers or, or, or material engineering because it involves computer programming, probabilistic analysis, earth science. Within civil engineering, on one end of the spectrum is structural engineering. 
from being design, construction of, of large, exciting infrastructure. Uh, that's one part of civil engineering. It's a very important part of civil engineering, but there are many other very different aspects. So I'm Perry Adabar, professor and head, Department of Civil Engineering. Transportation engineering deals with simulation, computer simulation. Geotechnical engineering is, is about engineering with the earth and the soil and, and designing foundations for structures. Then there is materials engineering, dealing with concrete, steel or timber are the main materials. Another very important discipline is construction and project management, which is really overlaps enormously with business. Environmental engineering on the other end of the spectrum is more about chemistry and biology. Let's go way back. Look back and reminisce on how it began and how I became the architect that I am. I knew I was an architect since the age of two. Standing in my crib, I had a fascinating view. Riding in my stroller, the sights were amazing. Everywhere I looked was stone, brick, and glazing. My second word form, first word function. My parents were amazed I could connect that conjunction. Looking like a zebra, yeah, I'm wearing white and black. Too busy building structures, ain't got no time to nap. We're architects, oh. and we knew it from the start. A perfect combination of building and art. Yeah. We've been creating since the age of two. And now we're designing a better city for you. My skills blossom at the age of six. Dropping instant designs with pickup sticks. Call me Abraham. I had skill with the Lincoln Logs. Designed a mini house for my dogs. I was a boss at Jenga, schooling all of my friends. Check out my desk, my great assortment of pens. Pulled my first all-nighter by the age of nine. With Legos I built an immaculate design. We're architects, oh. and we knew it from the start. A perfect combination of building and art. Yeah. We've been creating since the age of two. And now we're designing a better city for you. For architects, engineers, and construction professionals, it's critical to have the best possible information about a project to make the right decisions. Important shifts in the industry are happening. Yesterday's disconnected ways of working are in the past. Today, new efficiencies are being realized. Thanks to Building Information Modeling, BIM. BIM is the creation and use of coordinated, consistent information about a project. Information that enables you to visualize designs in context, accurately predict performance, analyze real-world structural behavior, and make design decisions earlier in the process, all before the project breaks ground helping thousands of architecture, engineering, and construction professionals streamline the way they work, increase productivity, and create high-quality projects by pushing the design boundaries and ultimately gaining a competitive advantage. That is absolutely amazing. Contractors, developers, end users should care about virtual reality because it's a tool that can let them visualize the end product of their project well before it's even under construction. They can take it from concept and, and realize that maybe their concept won't work and change things prior to, the, to spending too much money developing a design that at the end of the day they won't like. Getting the information earlier to the users would uh, save a lot of time and money because we can make changes on the fly. In our industry, being the healthcare industry, we have our staffs, nurses and all that like to see what the product is going to look like before uh, it's actually built. And uh, we have challenges throughout the entire construction process trying to express to them what the final product is going to look like. You actually get to see doors, you get to walk through spaces, you get to see the 3D elements, and you get to have the true feeling of being in the space without having to um, understand how big is 8 feet, how big is 10 feet. People don't naturally have the ability to be able to take those spatial relationships from a plan and put them into a real-life experience. 
the application of VR obviously is a is a tool that we could use that would that would eliminate the have to build these mock-ups, get a decision much earlier, and and that gets gets us to you know speed to market a lot better with the project, uh, and it gets the decision made by the staff and the users much quicker. So it, I think it'd be a great tool in the application of our industry.